In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about how to scan for Matterport. Actually, it's not everything you need to know. We're specifically focusing on how to scan an indoor and outdoor space that is designed for promote purposes. And it's actually really important to know why you're scanning your space before we can get into how to scan the space. So this is a promote use case. I'm scanning four tiny homes with an open deck in between, which means I've got both indoor and outdoor scans. I'll show you a little bit about how to scan the door both open and closed, though I do not recommend this. It is not supported and I'll get more into that a little bit later. Now let's talk about which camera is right for this job. I've chosen to go with the Pro 3 because the Pro 3 can do outdoors without a problem. So now that I've got my camera of choice selected, let's talk a little bit about prerequisites. Prerequisite number one is to walk the property, go ahead and turn on any lights, fluff any pillows, hide the remote controls, do anything you need to do to prep the space. Also, it's really important to note that during this part of the process, you wanna look around and make sure that you can position the camera with this tripod everywhere that you're gonna need it to be. So for example, in this corner over here, the chair is a little bit too close to that end table where it's going to be really tricky for me to put the tripod over there. So as I'm walking around and getting everything set up, I'm just going to move the chair a little bit, making room for the tripod. That way I don't have to move or adjust anything when I'm actually scanning. All right, prerequisite number two, unpacking your gear. If this is the first time you're setting up the Pro 3, check out the video I've linked to in the corner to know how to set it up on the tripod. And that's really it. Once you've got everything straightened out and ready to get scanned, so you don't have to stop and do anything during the scanning process, you've got your camera set up, you're ready to go. And now with those two prerequisites out of the way, first thing what I wanna do of course is go into the Matterport app and start a new job. So we'll press new job and I wanna provide the address. And of course the showcase name is optional but uh, certainly a good idea if you don't want the name to be the address. With the new job created, it's really simple to connect to the Pro 3. Just go ahead and turn on the camera. You hold the button down until you see the Matterport icon. And once the Wi-Fi icon is kind of flashing in the screen of the camera, I can go ahead and press iPhone just above the scan button and you should see Matterport Pro 3. Now it's gonna go ahead and use the Bluetooth of your phone and camera in order to connect via the Wi-Fi. It's setting up the Wi-Fi connection using the Bluetooth, but when we are scanning, we are only using the Wi-Fi connection. Lastly, before I go ahead and start scanning, however, I do want to mention that you want to look out for yourself in reflections. In this environment, we have a lot of windows, and I've noticed that every time I place the camera, I can see myself. So I don't want to walk around the back side of the camera, even though a lot of times that certainly would be possible and recommended. You're there, you're closer to the camera, it just makes things a little bit more efficient. In this environment, because of the amount of windows and reflections that we have, I'm gonna go ahead and just hide in pretty much every scan position. With that said, let's get started. As I'm scanning, I think about navigation and fleshing out the complete 3D model. You can see my Path of Alliance scans is pretty natural. I'm trying to make it so that my visitors have an experience that is as intuitive as possible. And as far as fleshing out the complete 3D model, although the Pro 3 does have great range, you can still see some black spots and dithering underneath the gazebo. I really should have added another scan position closer to the gazebo to make sure that area is fully fleshed out. The last thing anybody wants to do is have to go back on site because they forgot to scan something. I can always hide the scan position if it doesn't add any value or take value away from the visitor's experience. Outdoors, it's really wide open and I don't need to scan only every five to six feet. I can take much bigger steps between scan positions because not everything is so tight as it is inside. So inside, five to six feet, outdoors, it's wide open and you can just go maybe even 30 feet. As a result, you notice that I was able to get this entire deck in only 13 scans. So it all happened very, very quickly. Now, because I've gone all the way from the home at the very end over there and picked up the camera, I've come all the way back here to start my first indoor scan. I think I may have broken the path of alignment. It's hard to say with the Pro 3 because it probably could align between those two scan positions. But just to make sure, I'm gonna go ahead and scan over the same scan position that I've already captured in order to maximize the overlapping scan data to make it as easy as possible to align those two scan positions. Once that's done, I can go ahead and take the camera inside and continue my scan as usual. Just to be perfectly clear, not every scan position has to align with the previously scanned position. I can certainly pick up the camera and go to another position I've scanned a while back 
and start scanning there again. But what I can't do, for example, is scan inside one tiny house, pick up the camera, go into a different tiny house that I've never scanned before and start scanning there without having any kind of connecting scans between the two models. And the same is true for floors in a building. You can't just pick up the camera on floor two, go up to floor three and start scanning there. It won't understand how you got there and where that scan position belongs. So other than the very first scan position you're capturing, every other scan position has to align with some other scan position you've captured before. And the reason I like to have my new scan position over a previously scanned position is because the Matterport app will align where it finds the most alignment points and it has a bias towards the last scanned position. And since in this case, it can't find alignment with the last scanned position because that scanned position is no longer in line of sight, the app will simply spend more time trying to figure out where it belongs. So to make it really, really easy for the app to find as many alignment points as possible and as fast as possible, I really like to have this new scan position as close as I can to a previously scanned position. Of course, after I'm done processing the digital twin, I'm gonna hide one of these two scans to simplify navigation. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. That is for another video. On with the scanning. Before I go any further into this room, I want to take the camera and have a scan position right over here. This is not necessarily a scan position that I would normally do, but it's something that the client certainly may want, and I don't wanna to have to come back in order to capture it if they do say something. It's also a scan position that I can use in order to grab a photo of the entire room. So keep that in mind. Don't only include the scan positions for your virtual walkthrough, but also scan positions that you may just use to capture one of those 2D photos to later be used in marketing material or anything like that. You can see just how tight the space is, and in some instances, you can see how I'm really struggling to get the tripod through doorways and into tight areas. If you're also scanning through really tight areas and run into this situation, I highly recommend that you take your tripod and bring the legs in a little bit, making for a much more compact rig, you can easily move through tight areas. This is a really tight corner, so I wanna make sure that I get as many scan positions as possible. Later on, I can decide which of them I wanna hide and which of them I wanna keep in order to make the navigation experience as smooth and intuitive as possible. All right, I think we've seen enough of me scanning. What I want you to focus on now is the Matterport app over here. You can see how scans 29 and 30 are really close to one another. Remember, as I said before, you can always hide scans to improve the navigation experience. The reason I wanted these scan positions so close together is because I'm going through a doorway. And while in some cases it does make sense to have a scan position right in the middle of the doorway, in this case, because I'm just using this model for promote purposes, I prefer to have a scan position on the outside of the doorway and then another one just on the inside of the doorway. Now that is definitely not to say that if you're walking down a hallway and you have bedrooms and a bathroom on every side of the hallway, you wanna bounce between one side of the hallway to the other, having scan positions on either side of each one of those doorways. Definitely not, you wanna go straight down hallways, but you also wanna have a scan position just on the outside of the doorway, allowing the camera to see as much as possible into the room, and then another one just on the inside of the doorway, making that alignment really, really simple for the system. Then you can go ahead and move in, scan whatever you want to on the inside of that room, and again, later on, I can always hide that scan position that's just on the outside of the doorway if it makes more sense for navigation to go from the center of the hallway all the way into the bedroom. By keeping the scan positions closer together in these areas, even though I am increasing my scan density or including more scans than I otherwise would into my model, you're actually increasing the speed of alignment and therefore you can just move on to the next scan position faster. You can also see how from scan 30, a visitor would be able to continue going straight to move to one end of the room or turn left, moving towards the closet at the other end of the room. Lastly, I wanted to point out the little black spot on the floor in the closet. With the camera at a height of four and a half feet, which is recommended, there's really nowhere I can position the camera in this really, really tight environment where it'll be able to see the entire floor. And remember, it is important to flesh out the entire model. What I should have done is lower the tripod as much as possible and place the camera all the way in the corner of the closet to pick up and flesh out 
everything that scan position 32 wasn't able to see. You can see here in the final model that everything that couldn't be seen from position 32, the system basically had to guess at what was there. And for that reason, this area of the closet that could not be seen from scan 32 is not going to be fleshed out nearly as accurately as it could have been had I had a position inside the closet. All right, only three more tiny houses to go, but I'm gonna skip some to go to the last one where I wanna show you how to scan with the door both open and closed. However, before we get into how that can be done, it is critical that you know this is absolutely not recommended. The system is just not designed to do this. This is really just a hack to achieve a desired effect. I know a lot of you are interested in doing, but you should definitely know that this can absolutely lead to navigation issues through the doorway, which is exactly why it's not recommended. And in my personal opinion, does not add to the quality of the final digital twin. But with that said, now we made it to the last house. So what I wanna do is have one more scan just outside the door. Again, I've already done this scan position when I first scanned the entire deck, but because I've picked up the camera from inside the previous house, and put it over here, I'm breaking that path of alignment. After I've scanned this scan position right outside here, I'll have one right inside the door. Of course, I can't yet have the door closed, but I will have the scan position there. Another one right about here where I can have the door closed. Once I've done that, I'll go ahead and close the door and then scan again right over the same scan position. For the same reason as before, because we're changing the environment, I wanna make it as easy as possible for the Matterport app to find alignment. So what I don't wanna do is change the environment and change the scan position at the same time. So I'll leave the scan position here, change the environment, then I can go ahead and move forward. If I need to recapture this scan position with the door closed, I'll go ahead and back up, scan that again after I've closed the door, and then we can move forward. I'll show you how that looks. when that happens. If you've ever seen this before, it just means that this new scan position wasn't able to align with any previously scanned position. No worries, I can just open the door back up to how it was and scan another position, this time further into the house. Having the scan position over here was still a little too close to the doorway. When I closed the door, it wasn't able to align because it's just too much of the environment. So what I did was Scan again over here, and now hopefully the door is not as significant a part of the environment. The camera is not as close to it, so it will be able to align. I'll go ahead and close the door. I'll scan again with the camera exactly where it's at right now, and hopefully we'll get alignment. All right, we are all done with the scanning, back at the office, and now I can look at the model. What you wanna do is definitely make sure that all of the markings that you may have missed while on site get added at this point before you upload the data. All the mirror markings definitely should have been taken care of while on site. I may have some window markings left and some trim markings that I wanna take care of now. How to create these markings, I'm gonna leave that for another video, but just so you know, make sure that all your markings are set up. And now all I have to do is just press upload and I'm done. The alignment between all the scan positions has already been done and the processing engine is going to tweak that a little bit just to kind of refine that. But basically that's it. Creating your digital twin is entirely automated from this point. And that's really all there is to it. Scanning a digital twin is just a matter of understanding what you're gonna do with the digital twin after it's been processed to know where you wanna place those scan positions for the optimal outcome. I know this was an especially long video and I do apologize for that, but I hope you got something out of it and we'll see you in the next video.